Hi, Eric Johnson here at Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management. And I'm here today with Yvette Smith. Yvette is a general manager of customer service and support for the cloud and enterprise division of Microsoft. And uh, she's here today to talk about tech and uh, leadership roles in tech and how the tech industry is changing. So it's so great to have you here today, Yvette. Thanks, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. So lots changing in tech uh, and in your world as there's just kind of a constant churn I've got to believe managing that change is a big deal. How, how do you think about that and, and then prepare your team to, to change? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, for us at Microsoft, it is a constant game of change. If you think about where we've come from, from just being predominantly a software company to now where we are really leading with the cloud, with mobile, with devices, our gaming business is tremendous. I mean, change is a constant. I mean, everybody says that, but for us to survive, and especially all of us tech companies to survive, we have to constantly be after it. Mm -hmm. So it is a challenge with our people. Um, I have over 4,000 people wow. in my organization yeah. that I have to keep thinking about being prepared, not for today, but for you know two tomorrows from now, mm -hmm. right? Um, because customer our cus needs are changing. Customer needs are changing. They and our customers love to use everything we put out there, and along with open source, mm. along with um, other people's uh, devices, other people's software. So we absolutely have to be ready for whatever set of combinations they've put together, wow. we have to be prepared to support. So it's a combination of readiness, kind of core training and technical um, training. It's a big partnership with our engineering and product groups to make sure we understand what's coming next mm -hmm. um, before it's even here. It's a combination of thinking about how do we problem solve, and that's a big deal because yeah. as our customers call in, they're often really, really smart yeah. in, wha in what they're using, right? They know their pro our products, they use them, they know their environment. How do we help them solve the problem? How do we get good information from them? So a lot of focus on problem solving skills, and in doing that, um, it's important to think about what the customer's outcome, and that I have found is the best way to keep people thinking about changing yeah. Because if we are thinking about how our customers are changing, yeah. then we can keep up with that. And now I love my team because they're actually asking me mm -hmm. to help them change, That's right? How, how, how can we better support that change that they see coming? So it's a, it's a tremendous time. It's a tremendous challenge, but it's the fun challenge. That's why we, that's why we love um, the tech industry. Right? Yeah. yeah, well, speaking of challenges, ever since the election, of course, cyber has been on everyone's mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, given you working with enterprise customers, I'm sure they're asking you a lot about, you know, is my data safe in the cloud? Uh, yes. How do you think about cyber and how do you help your customers solve those problems? Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, the whole weaponization of our products just, I mean, it, it hurts us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when we think about, you know, our mission is to help improve the world, help empower people, and then people take what we put out there and use it against the same companies and people who we're trying to help, it, it just is so frustrating. So um, security's not a new challenge, right? I mean, back in the 90s when I was working at IBM, we were worried about security. Now the challenge is that it can come from every angle and the network aspect of it and the many entry points and then, again, putting your data, your applications, our customers are putting their customers' data in the cloud, keeping it secure, is absolutely you know, paramount to us. So we spend a lot of time, especially with our enterprise customers, working on it on a couple levels. One, um, we help them understand our enterprise architecture, right? so they understand the architecture which we're building our cloud under, and making sure that it's aligning tightly with their architecture. That's where a lot of the gaps can happen, mm -hmm. is when there's a gap between our infrastructure the and their infrastructure and yeah. the connection. So that's a big part of it. Um, the second piece is, is the process, right? You have to, we, ha we highly encourage and beg and plead <laughs> our customers to use um, the world-class business processes that we put out there, right? Because it's one thing to have an infrastructure that works, but then if you don't have processes that guide your people in what they do, um, then you can end up with gaps. So as an example, we just went through um, the two big ransomware attacks in um, late May, early June. The main problem was people hadn't been updating their software. Mm. Right, so we put the updates out. Yeah. You know, people in process, policy, whatever it was. Blocking some, and tackling. Right. Patch some, management. Keep exactly. It up. And so, in some enterprises around the world, yeah. some governments didn't do that. Well, they were ripe mm -hmm. for people to exploit those um, vulnerabilities. So what we did is we said, look, it's it's not even about the money anymore. Here, it's all free. Here, take it. Do just please, right? 
please take advantage of it and protect yourself. So it is a huge part of the conversations that we have, particularly in the cloud and enterprise business, um, and also for our Office 365 um, environment. But the good thing is, is if clients are operating in our mm -hmm. cloud environment, we will protect them, right. right? And so we have the capability and the infrastructure to do that, um, and it's just making sure that they're doing their part. Yeah, yeah, helping them understand that your security is probably so much better than what they have in their own environment. Exactly, exactly, and that was one of the big things that came out is, you know, our clients who were being managed by us were fine the last two ransomware attacks. Yeah. It was ones that, that were, you know, trying to manage it themselves. Yeah. Well, we've been reading a lot about uh, some of the challenges of women in tech yeah. and uh, firms like Uber really struggling uh, with their culture and their management. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, as a black woman in technology, how has that affected your leadership style? You know, it's interesting. I started um, with IBM right here in Nashville when I uh, spent 17 years at IBM. And back in the 90s, I was so fortunate to have great mentors and being in a company like IBM and then going to a company like Xerox that had such core values around diversity, around respect for the individual. It was a long time before I really had to think about do I lead differently as a woman or do I lead differently as an African American? Because I had so many role models around me, it didn't seem incredibly different. Yeah. Um, now, as, you, as you're looking at how many um, tech companies there are and how the opportunities for women have not risen the way they should and how some of the core values that, again, I'm so used to um, are not you know through all of these companies, it really, is making me think differently and change. So some of the things, one is really advocating in a way that I actually never thought I would have to because I had al it had always been so much around me, right? So now as I'm moved, we just left Atlanta mm -hmm. and I'm moving to Seattle. Senior leadership. Very leadership. different world, yeah. right? In a senior, very senior role. Now having to provide that, being that advocate, um, much more for women behind me and much more for minorities behind me than I ever thought I would have to. Mm -hmm. Also kind of bringing to the table the fact that diversity truly is valuable. Um, and I think in companies like Microsoft where it's such a global and international company, you have so many different people at the table from so many different places with so many experiences. It is important to bring that visibility to Microsoft but to other tech companies. So I'm doing a lot of mentoring um, of my peers and other companies as well and saying, hey, how, how, how can we help you? think about that diversity. Um, and then the, the other thing is just being s comfortable in who I am, right, and being who I am. Um, and that goes from being first a wife and a mother and a daughter and an African American and saying that's, for, that's who I am first. And I'm a general manager or a senior VP or any of those other things. That's, that's, the, that's my job, but I bring all of that with me to work. And I think that has also helped me lead in a way that people um, see that women like me, African Americans like me, can lead in the way that I have. Do you find any interesting support groups among the tech companies? Are there are there groups that you found that are particularly useful? Or? Yeah, I don't know that there are groups that I would say, and I think it's a little different at the level I, that I am right now. Um, I would say there are definitely networks, and that's I think what's really important, and providing those linkages. Um, and so I have been so fortunate to have um, a great network that has provided me links to other senior African Americans, other senior women who are willing to help, and then I'm doing the same for others. So it does get kind of interesting at a, at a certain level where it really does truly become mm -hmm. about that informal network where people are able to come together. Well, one of my great joys in my job is meeting lots of executives like yourself, yeah. and I always like to ask, about a leadership lesson that they've picked uh, up along the way, uh, something you could pass on. Absolutely, I think the biggest thing, and I refer to it a little bit, is being authentic. Knowing who you are and being who you are and making it work for you. Um, because we give so much into these roles, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be all consuming at points. And I learned um, probably most importantly when I was in Canada leading the disaster recovery business there. It was my first big cross-functional role, and I had to be comfortable with who I was, mm -hmm. what I knew, and that I didn't know all of these functional um, components. I, I wasn't an expert mm -hmm. for the first time in everything that I was managing. And I had to be okay with saying that. I had to be okay with trusting my team. I had to be okay with um, 
letting them make mistakes. And part of that was being, being comfortable with who I was in and what I brought to the table. So I would say the biggest lesson in leadership that I carry all the time is just truly being authentic, true to who I am, not trying to be anybody other than that and bringing that to the table because then my leadership team will do that and rise and we always end up, you know, really doing the best, the best work that we can ever do. So that's great. Well, Yvette, thanks so much for spending the day with us at Vanderbilt. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it.